Dearest world students, I welcome you to basic technology class. And today we are going to study wood work hand tools. What do I say? Wood work hand tools. By the end of the lesson, you would be expected to learn these things. Number one, you should be able to identify measuring instruments we use in wood work activities. Number two, you should be able to describe the work, the wood work hand tools, to describe them by naming them and knowing how they function. Then three, you should be able to know the uses and also how to sketch the woodwork hand tools. Is that clear? I believe it is clear. In previous time, we studied about wood. We talked about materials we can use in engineering activities. As we are told second term, those materials were wood metal, ceramics, plastics, rubber, clay, and the other ones. And you were told that wood is made from what? Tree. Do you know any other area wood can be gotten from, apart from tree? There's no any other area. Wood is gotten from tree. And in that lesson, you were told the type of tree good wood can be gotten from. And that tree is a deciduous tree, which is also, which is also um, hard wood. As we mentioned in that lesson, we talked about Iroko, we talked about uh, Obeche, and several of them that can be taken as a hard wood. So having said that, our concern today is how we can use hand tools to improve in the way we use wood to produce other materials or material that can be useful to our life, that can make us comfortable. And the use of wood has been an old fashioned, it has been for a long time. So we are going to identify those tools. But before we go into that, let's go by defining these terms. Woodwork, what does it mean? It is any art of using wood to make roof, to produce furniture, short, or such as bed, tables, chairs, cupboard, wardrobe, and several other ways you can see wood being applied to make life easy. The another one is uh, the wood work hand tools by definition. These are the hand tools we use for wood work projects. Any wood work project is always done by certain tools. And without those tools, wood work project cannot be successful. We cannot provide or produce what can make our life comfortable. Since we have uh, hand tools, it means that we only have uh, machines that can do this work. But our concern today is the hand tools that can use in wood or producing materials that we can use from wood. Then have you imagined before the seat you have in your houses, the cupboard, the wardrobe, how are they being produced? They are all produced from wood. And how do we get them in such a way they are being designed? It is through the help of hand tools. Without the hand tools, the chair you have cannot be produced. Even though photo you have in your sitting rooms cannot be produced. Hand tools, they are the help in doing such production. And somebody that works on wood, we always use the word carpenter, a person that works with wood that helps in producing this thing we have in our houses. 
And we have another term which we call general. That is a person that fix wood or joints, make joints from the wood. So that's uh, by definition. Then we are going to equally look into look into how we can use uh, the tools to, pro to produce all these areas we can think of. Now we look at uh, classification of woodwork hand tools. When we say classification, we are talking about grouping the woodwork hand tools. Number one in the grouping is measuring tools. That is woodwork measuring tools. What do I say? Woodwork measuring tools. Those ones we use them to measure the length of the wood, the width, the thickness, and also the the style of it. The another one is setting and mark out hand tools. Setting and marking out tools. We only use it for the woodwork. Then the other one is the driving tools. We have a boring tools. We have a holding tools. We have a cutting and the pairing tools. These are the woodwork hand tools that we can use to produce certain things that can make us comfortable as we use the wood. Then let's go to the measuring tools, which is number one. Measuring tools are the tools we use to measure the length of the wood, the width of the wood or the thickness. That's what we use measuring tools for. And those measuring tools are graduated or calibrated in centimeter, in millimeter, in meter. Even there are other measuring tools that you see in cheese, you see their feet. But the common ones we use are the ones we use centimeter, millimeter, and uh, meters, depending on the length. If we have a short length, we use centimeter, short length that we're going to measure. We use a millimeter can catch it up and uh, centimeter can equally catch it. For instance, the wood in my hand is not long, it is short. So with millimeter, we'll be able to capture the length of it. And with millimeter, the centimeter, we can equally capture the length of it. But if we have a long length, we can use a, um, a measuring tape, can capture that. Measuring tape can capture that. So I will mention the, what we use uh, the measuring tools for. So let's list out the instruments that make up the measuring tools. And those instruments will have a metric rule, we have a measuring tape, we have a calipers, we have dividers, we have a vernier caliper, we have a micrometer gauge or micrometer screw gauge. These are the instruments that we can use to measure when we are operating on wood. The number one in the list is metric rule or measuring tape. We use it to do the measurement. Therefore, what we have here, this is a metric rule. This is a metric rule which we commonly call ruler. Can anyone tell me the function of this? This is ruler. The function is not to rule line of ruler. It's not to rule line. As we said before, when we are talking about uh, uh, the drawing instrument, the function of this rule is to measure. And you can see the calibrations there. It's to measure length of object. There, this is made of plastic. I will have a metric rule that is made of steel. This is steel, metric rule. And it is graduated in millimeter, in centimeter. We will use it to measure. And in our mathematical set, you have uh, most of the materials I'm talking about. Here you have uh, 
the rule, which you call ruler, is not to rule line. If you are using to rule line, you don't improvise. It's to measure the length of materials. Then we have a measuring tape. Measuring tape. This one can measure long distance. Measuring tape can measure long distance. Why the other ones can measure shorter distance? Measuring tape. Are you positive? <laughs> so that is uh, what we use the measuring instrument for. Then we talk about uh, uh, calipers. We'll go into that. All right, the next uh, tool that we can use in woodwork activities, as we are talking about woodwork hand tools, that one is calipers. Calipers are also used to measure the diameters of objects or wood, as we are discussing. Then caliper will have a uh, several types of calipers. We have an inside caliper, we have an outside caliper, we have an odd leg caliper, we will have a vernier caliper. They do different measurements, which we are going to see as we describe them one after the other. Then let's look at uh, inside calipers. Inside calipers are used to measure inside diameter of an object. If that object has a hole or has a, a round shape, we use inside caliper to do the measurement. Okay, let's look at uh, this. Okay, this is uh, inside caliper. This is the inside caliper. If you just check the two ends, we have a curve pointing outwards. So what we use it is to measure inside diameter of an object. If I want to get the inner diameter of this object I'm holding, inside caliper can do the work. So when you take the measurement, you can now take it to a rule to really get the exact uh, measurement, either in millimeter or in centimeter. That is inside caliper, as simple as this. As you're looking at it, it's not a divider. It's different. Look at the curve showing that it's different from dividers, the one you have in your mathematical set. Then we have another one which we call outside caliper. The outside caliper measures the outer diameter of an object. You look at how the curve is, and there's a space here. So for us to get the diameter of this object, you unscrew it, it will expand. So that will give us the diameter, you unscrew it back. It will give us the outer diameter of in their own object. And what I'm holding is a wood. So it can be constructed where you have a round shape to be fixed in any part of the construction you're making. So this one is an outside caliper that does the measurement of outer diameter of a wood or any object. But in context, what we are talking about today is wood. Then we we'll look at uh, the another one is uh, odd leg caliper. If you check the drawing here, the odd leg has a one side bent outward and uh, has a, a straight part. What do we use it for? We use it to locate the center of a workpiece or to make a mark on a wood before we do the cutting. 
Now to say this one, we point at a, a space where this one will move to trace the part. It could be a, a stress part that we want to call that is odd leg uh, caliper. Then the next one is dividers. This is uh, dividers. Dividers. We use it to transfer measurement from one point to another. This is wood. We can use it to take measurement of a certain length of the wood or diameter. Then we now go to our metric rule to really sort out the actual measurement of that wood or that length. That is the virus. And you have it in your mass set. It's a good set. Is it the divider we have in the mass set? It does the same work as this big one. Just to take care a measurement and also transfer the measure from one point to another. Then use your metric rule or your tape to really get the actual measurement. So these are the measuring instruments we use in wood work, the hand tool measuring instruments. These are the ones we can mention. Then as we go further, we have a vena caliper. These are advanced ones. A vena caliper is different from these other calipers we mentioned. As you look at the diagram, you see the curve outwards, curve outwards. What does it do? It can measure inside diameter of an object. And you see this space here, here I can measure outer diameter. And we can as well use it to measure some uh, short length, a weight of a wood or any other object. It is slight, you can slide it. When you slide it, it will expand. Then you put the object in between, you slide until the, the two jaws grip the object. And that will help you to take the reading here. Then we can as well take the reading up to two decimal points. So in other words, vena caliper can be more accurate than this other measurement because of the decimal points it can pick. The another advanced one is a micrometer screw gauge. Some people call it a micrometer gauge. This is the instrument. Some of them are digital. As we expand, it will read. Then the ones we have on the board, they are uh, mechanical. We have the graduations are there. So in this uh, micrometer screw gauge, in physics, it can equally be applied as you advance in the study, you pass the exams, you get the SS1, and you want to do physics, you want to study engineering, you want to study medicine. Physics is one of the important uh, subjects that you can have before um, getting admission into an institution. In physics, we have a micrometer screw gauge then we only use it in other workshops. Then here, as you unscrew, the jaw will open. And you take your measurement, the graduations are there, where the readings you can take. And this one is more accurate because it gives us up to three decimal points in our measurement. It is small diameter you can pick. So this is all about a measuring instrument we can use in our wood work. Well. We look at uh, other tools we use in woodwork activities. The other one is the setting and marking art tools. The first time we talked about the measuring tools, woodwork measuring tools. The hand tools we can use to measure wood, which you've explained. Then the next one is a setting and marking out tools. They are very necessary in woodwork. What do we use them for? They are hand tools used to set the straightness or angles of edges of objects or wood. When two edges of wood are joined together. So we use those setting out tools and marking out tools to really know whether they are straight or they are bending. An example on that line is tri-square. Tri-square, we use tri-square to know the edge of a 
joint wood, whether that edge is at 90 degree or right angle. And this is tri square. We have it in wooden form. This is a metal form. So when two wood are joined at a point, then we use the tri square to really know the straightness from the upper side and the downside, and that will give us a 90 degree, which is right angle at that corner. Then another one is a meter rule. From the spelling, we have M-E-T-R-E. -E. Other textbooks use the M-I-T-R-E. -E. We call it a meter square. Meter square. And that's the shape of it of meter square. What do we use meter square for? Is to know or set the edge of any joint point to give us 45 degrees. It measures only 45 degrees. If the edge is slanted at 45 degree, the meter square will give us such measurement and also make impression that it is 45 degree or how we can get a 45 degrees. Then we see in setting out and marking out tools, we have a sliding bevel. The sliding bevel gives us angles equally as meter square gives us angles. But the difference here is the sliding bevel gives us different angles. So meaning that if we have uh, two wood to be joined together, the edge can be in a slanting form at different angles outside 45 degrees. That is a sliding bevel. We use it to set and uh, mark edges at different uh, angles. Then we move up to this another level, the spirit level gauge. It also helps us to know the straightness of the object we are building up. For instance, you put a wood in a straight form. The spirit level gauge will tell us whether that point is very straight or it is bending. Because there are there's liquid at uh, this opening. So this liquid will look at how they are being positioned. That will tell us whether they are straight or not. Even the brick I know that the build houses, they use a spirit level gauge. So you can know the straightness of the block they are laying. Then the next one that is equally important is marking knife. In woodwork, we must mark out. Most of the time, we use knife to mark out points, straight lines on the wood before we cut. Because without this marking out, you might cut wrongly. When you measure, the next thing that will follow is to mark. And when you mark after the measurement, then we now use the saw to cut that point accurately. So without marking out, you can make a lot of mistakes. So we have another one which we call trammers. These trammers is in this form. We only use it to set out distance. We have uh, two points here, like nail. Then when we put it on a, a wood and push it, it can scratch on a stretch form and give us a, a straight line where we can cut. You know, we're talking about uh, hand tools. They will have machines that can do those cutting and equally measuring and cut on this one. But with hand tool, we have to do this. And mark at the, you measure the, the space is being measured, you expand it. Then this is a point here, this is a point here. You move it along the object you are working on. And these two will scratch and give us the straightness of the two points that we can now cut. That is a trimmer. We use it uh, in wood work. Then the last here, um, setting and the marking out tools is compasses, a pair of compasses. You know those ones. We talk about them when we treated the um, drawing instruments, which you have in your mathematical set. Then this is a compass. 
you know where we put our pencil? You have used it before. The compass. We use it in world work. The word we use it for equally to make a marking and to draw cuts. As we have it here, they are used for scribing circles or curves and marking our distances on the work page. We put pencil there, that will give us a mark. And uh, in terms of a marking tool, we use pencil very much in World War, pencils. And you see the, the carpenters, they always put pencil on their hair because they use it to do some uh, markings. And that will enable us to get those uh, measurements well. Now for today, this is uh, all we have as a uh, woodwork measuring tools, woodwork setting out and marking out tools. There are other ones we will unfold when we meet again. Then you go through this work. I will give you an assignment later on. Go through all we've done today about woodwork hand tools. Woodwork hand tools. The woodwork that we can use our hands and the tools we can use our hands to work on. And in the first place, we talk about uh, measuring um, tools, woodwork measuring tools, which we mentioned the uh, metric rule, we mentioned the um, measuring tape, the calipers, micrometer screw gauge, vernier calipers, so on and so forth. So what you must do is to study their uses and also to study how to sketch them with your hand. And also when you see them, you should be able to identify them. Then the next one is the assignment you do at home. These are the assignments you have to do and make sure you do these assignments. Uh, we have it on, on the board. Draw and state the uses of the following woodwork hand tools. The metric rule, the trial square, sliding bevel, trail mass, calipers, meter square. I want you to do them. And that's the end of our class today. We meet again. Stay safe, obey the rules that will guide us against COVID-19. God bless you.